Coming up, for me, um, I associated the name when I hear drone. Of course, apart from the bee, the, the, the insect that goes by that name, the male insect, I, I, had, I had thoughts of, you know, war. Of course, actually an unmanned uh, aerial vehicle that you can use to cause havoc, you know, something you don't want to send a manned uh, pilot there or something. But then, now its use has spread across to sports uh, entertainment. So now kids growing up these days, when they hear drones now, they actually think of entertainment. Well, we've got a connoisseur in the art of droning here. He's called the drone guy. Um, I would want, want to ask how he got that sub, okay? But then I've got James Amuta in the house. It's great to have you on the show, sir. Thank you. It's great to have you. Drone you. guy. Great drone guy. Here, how did the sub, okay, come? Was it given to you or did you pick it yourself? Well, that, that's actually funny. I think um, it all started, I think, um, we were doing... We had a production, so um, uh, I was contracted by one of my friends to come operate the drone for the documentary and stuff. And then when I walked in, um, there were other production people there. Oh, meet James Amuta, and people already know me as director, producer, and stuff like that. So um, just to clarify the roles and stuff, the drone guy. And I said, wow, I like that. The drone you guy. Actually, you and like and that. it stuck. So we just um, um, put it down as a trademark of oh, okay. the James Amuta company, and we started running with it ever since. So, yeah, I like it. Wonderful, yes. wonderful. Okay, so let me just put this down in layman's, uh, layman's terms. When you talk about drone, uh, you watch football matches, premiership matches, and all of that, you know. Now, you see those aerial over, overhead shots. Earlier on, this use helicopters, right? Yeah, yeah. They use helicopters, oh, and then you see somebody the going there with one very mighty mm. HD camera and all of that. But then, uh, there's been evolution, right? So now they use what? Now you're going to talk to us exactly what is a drone? What are its capabilities? What does it do? In the very, in the most lay, in the, mm. the most lay terms you can. What is a drone? What does it do? What can it do? Okay, basically, um, let's clarify one thing. We're talking about civilian drones. Civilian yeah. drones, exactly. Not uh, militarized not drones yeah. and stuff. So, um, um, and when you talk about civilian drones, you have different types of drones. You have drones you use for traffic reports, you have okay. drones you use for surveillance, you have drones you use for surveys, you have drones you use for search and rescue, yeah. you have drones you use for filmmaking. So today I'm going to be concentrating on the ones we use for okay. filmmaking. Okay. So these are just um, flying cameras, okay. you know, with very amazing gimbals, you know, like Steadicam and stuff, you know, to keep your shots steady and the film ultra high definition you know we can film up to 4k resolution with these drones and 4K. stuff so that's wow. four times or probably eight times the quality of broadcasting right now yeah. that's what these drones are capable of filming and outputting live okay. you know so um yeah it's a very amazing technology you can start from a very close-up shot and then uh, wow. show the whole city so and stuff so wonderful. yeah they how Let's talk about aerial. Um, how far, how far up can a drone go? It depends. Then again, it depends on the type of drone we're talking about. Okay. I personally can push my drone up to about 20,000 feet. And um, I can cover a distance of up to 3.5 to 5 kilometers. Mm, mm, yeah. Mm. If, 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 mm. if it comes to it. But if you're making a film, what are you doing at 20,000 feet? So we try to stay very safe within limits. FA limits and stuff like that, you know, 500 feet, 400 feet, 400 feet just exactly. concentrate on what you're filming you're and filming. stuff so you don't just, you know, okay, jump I've, the airspace. I've, seen, I've seen a number of movies and I see some unnecessary aerial shots. Oh. It's almost like some people want to show you that, look, man, we actually use the drone for this. We want to take an aerial shot. That doesn't actually, you know, sit mm, well with, exactly. Yeah. So what, is there, is, is there, a, is there some sort of, um, Let's say somebody hires a drone or gets a drone or buys a drone for something. There is that sort of pressure to show what I did to put it. Do you ever feel that kind of pressure to oh, no, put no. those kind of shots? No. Basically, first of all, you have to understand that we have hobbyists. We have enthusiasts. We just have the people, my papa get money syndrome. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. when my papa gets money and I carry money, I buy a drone, I, I just don't know what to do with it. Those are hobbyists, those are not professionals. professionals but as a professional filmmaker who had to pay upwards of $10,000 to hire a helicopter to get aerial shots for my productions, you before know, the, before, before, the, the, before, the, before the drones came on board, wow. you know, 
before I, 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 I start, I want to shoot with a drone, I have to think, okay, um, what story am I trying to tell? What, what am I trying to, what kind of story am I trying to tell? And then before I do that, so I never get tempted. That, those things are very expensive. So, you know, you don't just wake up and start playing with them. They're not toys. Let's, uh, uh, let's talk about the expense. How much, um, averagely, how much can I get them? Uh, then again, um, Amazon will be your friend, or B&H okay. will be your friend, or Google will be your, <laughs> your friend. friend. Okay. But um, it's just like asking somebody how much does the car cost. Yeah. There is a Prius, Toyota Prius, and mm. then there is a Bugatti Veyron. Mm -hmm. You understand? Exactly. So, you know, cars, different, different. cars, supercars. You know, so, but is there any range? Just give us a, a range. Just, just give like us something. That. Well, um, for stuff that hobbyists can use, you know, just my papa gets money and I want to play with yeah. stuff that flies. You have between nine hundred and a thousand five hundred dollars. Then mm. for the professionals, you have from anywhere between a thousand five hundred dollars to fifteen thousand dollars. You know, and then sometimes um, if you want to now go for a super professional stuff like pipeline surveillance and stuff like that, you're looking at drones of up to two hundred thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to go militarized, you know, you're talking about two million to come, five come, million come, come, dollars. Come, come, come. It's okay, it's okay. Thank so, you. Uh, buy your Prius. Uh, <laughs> Thank uh, you. So. It's our due. Okay, now, you, before now, we're talking about a project you had to undertake. Uh, you had to climb uh, to, the, mm. to, the, to the heights of the Kilimanjaro and all of that. Now, that's, mm. that's, that's something. Could you talk to us about it? Okay. Um, I've always been, uh, I'm, I'm an adrenaline junkie. Mm. You know, I like high octane activities. I'm not a very fit person. I don't exercise, I don't work out. I don't, you know, so the only workout I, 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 I put in is when it's work related and stuff. So okay. recently I had a project, I had a documentary to film at the summit of um, Mount Kilimanjaro, which is wow. Africa's tallest mountain, mountain. Exactly. and um, one of the world's seven summits, you know. So yeah, we, we hiked for six seven days climbed for six days to get to the top and i made it to the summit um uhuru peak wow. beautiful place and stuff like that magical you can see allen avenue from tanzania at that at that height yeah Whoa. you're actually staring at what? you're looking down on the clouds what? from that altitude and you climbed for me to make you understand planes that travel between lagos and Abuja, you know, their cruising altitude fluctuate between 26,000 feet and, and 32,000 okay. feet. Yeah. You know, so if you are at 20,000 20, feet, feet, imagine. The mm -hmm. world's tallest mountain is 28,000 feet. That's Everest. Everest. And I'm going to be climbing that next. You know, but it's, um, it's a very long-term project. You know, because plenty of people died there. And, you know. I, but what I mean, was the experience climbing uh, the Kilimanjaro? What was um, it like? Okay, I died and I resurrected after <laughs> no, the first they, day. Yeah. I mean, because I, what was going through your mind? Why it's, would you want to take such a... Uh... It's very cold, it's very steep, it's very scary. You can fall to your death at any time. I actually died the first night. It was crazy. You know, because the oxygen levels, they are so thin. Yeah. You know, it's like... Let me, let me create an analogy. Imagine being locked in the trunk of a car. A car, hmm? okay. Now, imagine... Um, one third of the oxygen you have at that moment when you're locked in the, in the trunk, trunk of, of a car. car, that's the oxygen levels you have wow. to sustain you there. So you, you go through what we call um, acclimatization. Yeah. You take some drugs to lower your heart rate. Oh, so, right. so you'll be able to consume the little oxygen you have there. When we got to the summit, uh, the, final, the summit day, it was minus 26 degrees cold. How was your gear? What, yeah, what did you, yeah, you know, we had, you know, you can wear stuff like this. You know, you can just have it inside. Then you have um, thermal pants, okay. like three of them. Whoa. So that's four. And then you have three pairs of socks on. And then you have very large boots. Then you have um, um, thermal jackets, like four of them. And then you have a baraclava, mm -hmm. you know. Wow. And stuff you know there should be pictures and stuff like that plenty of them you know, uh, you know baraclava and you, you know it's just yeah and big gloves you that, don't take your gloves off at all now what inspired you to go on that was it the financial the pecuniary gains or yeah. was it passion for what you do it, it's it's basically passion for for what i do uh, it was a very beautiful um, project you know a project that started like 
uh, you know, play, play like joke, like a joke and stuff. Yeah. But um, later, I got to to the attention of the first lady of Nigeria, the wife of the president, okay. uh, Mrs. Um, Aisha Muhammadu Buhari. You know, so she was interested in the project, so she sent. Um, the first lady of Ogun State to represent her, to climb on her behalf. So I was climbing with um, four women, all above the age of 50, and I was um, the director. Also. Yeah, I was the director and producer hmm. of, 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 um, of the project. So, yeah, and they were all climbing to they raise funds, also. to raise awareness for the plight of women and children in IDP camps. So. Ten minutes into the journey, I, I, I decided to turn back. I said, no, 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 I'm not doing this anymore. But then the mountain guy told me, come, guy, you're the man here. You know, if these women can make this thing, are you you're hmm. turning back after ten minutes? You'll break a world record as the fastest quitter on <laughs> Mount Kilimanjaro. <laughs> That's a bad record So anyways. I said, you know what, let me just uh, say ten minutes, come on, at least one day. So hmm. every day I had to tell myself, okay, last one more day. Every day, one more day. Every wow. day, one more day. Wow. So when wow. I resurrected after dying the first night, you know, <laughs> I literally died. Seriously. This how, one how do you mean? stuff. You how know, do you mean? I, I, was, I was cold. It was the first time I was being thrust into that kind of, you know, situation. Okay. You know, walking, trekking in the dark, in the night, in the rain and stuff. We started the trek around 5 p.m. the first day. And then we got to the camp around 1, 2 a.m. You're walking through a rainforest. You're hearing animals howling wild animals and they're more scared of you than you are of them and then it's raining and then it's cold and then we got to the day's camp to james um supper supper so that i died i passed up then i woke up the next morning <laughs> funny enough yeah you know so that um that energy uh, i just don't know where it came from i was wow. like oh i survived i'm gonna make it wow now but it was, it was it was wow it was that's, that's that's a wealth of experience you already have there i yeah. don't want to spend more time talking with you Okay, but then, now let's come to your project so the far. Um, yeah, the project and all that you've been involved in. Let's, let's talk about your project generally. Which projects have you done that stood out the, that stood out the most for you, that challenged you? Hmm. Okay. Um, I, I've done a lot of projects. Yeah, so that's I true. I have a lot. You know, I started actually as, um, as a writer and publicist for shows like The, the Apprentice, Dragon's okay. Den. Um, I did Nigerian the Idol. Yeah. The Apprentice. Um, Donald Trump's Apprentice? Yes, the African version of Okay, Donald the Trump's African version, okay. Apprentice. It's still okay. Donald Trump's. Uh, yeah, okay, Matt okay. Bonnet's production and All stuff. Right. Are you smarter than a 10-year-old? Um, the third season of um, Nigerian Idol, Idol okay. Coco Mansion, um, um, Copa Coca-Cola. Okay. Um, did some stuff for him, 100% Niger and stuff. You know, so that was how I started. But. At what level did you work in these productions? Was that as a writer? Series writer okay. and publicist. And publicist, yeah. all right, okay. And then um, um, I went independent, okay. I think six years ago. Started my own company and then we've been pushing. So since then we've done, I think, one of my most exciting projects, which would I say was a project I did for Ovaltine and DHL, okay. where we had to documentary for, um, for these companies. We had to travel to um, Adamawa State. Okay. to the IDP camps, IDP the camps, camps wow. for internally displaced persons and stuff. And then the, the area at that particular point that was still very volatile. And then we had to go from camp to camp, you know, the whole security round, and then you leave the camp and then you're hearing that, uh, by the time you're getting to Lagos today and you're hearing tomorrow that they bombed the camp you visited yesterday and stuff. So it was, mm. it was a very exciting project. And from, from what you're seeing so far, I think you have a very soft spot. You have a humanitarian spot because you've been talking about yeah. IDPs and all that. Yeah. What inspires that? Oh, um, <clears throat> I say, first of all, um, I, um, I'm a romantic at heart. You know, started with poetry. I've published book of poetry, by the way. Enigma beyond the poet. You know, so I feel things. I, I'm like, my, my mind is like a sponge. I try to soak in things from the society and, you know, People suffering, they, they get to me and stuff like that. So I always oh. tell myself, okay, use your skill as a storyteller, as a dynamic filmmaker to, 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 to spread hmm. the message of um, hope for these people or try to get help for these people. It was actually based on the strength of the documentary I did at the, with the IDPs that actually brought about the trip to Kilimanjaro oh. and brought the, the plight of these 
internally displaced women and children to the wife of the president and then a lot of people and, and brands started supporting taking things to them and stuff like that you know but um, a lot of people wouldn't know the little guy who mm. was who, who who poured his soul into a project like this to make such things happen wow. so yeah that's 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 what i do danger. i like danger anyway i like danger wow. like like living you know, on the edge so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i love the saying that it's uh at the edge of a precipice, that's where humanity evolves. Wonderful. So, James, uh, what are we to expect from you, the brand James Amuta, the drone guy, future projects? What are we oh, to look forward to? Wow. The drone guy. Um, finally, we ended up not talking about the drone guy. Now, the <laughs> drone guy. Um, it is a specialty trademark that we're trying to push. We believe that people who do weddings, um, real estate videos, um, film stabs, these things are so boring. They're so one-dimensional and stuff true like that, that you know so so we're, we're we're pushing the envelope we're trying to we're trying to make people see that their productions can have this larger than life appeal so real and stuff. experience yes so one of the projects we're we're working on now is called nigeria from a bed's eye you know Whoa. we did a project called lagos from a bed's eye Better. where we had to capture all the amazing um um, 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 um you know capture all the amazing places in lagos from the bed's eye with a drone and stuff. So we want to take it over, take it, uh, scale it up a bit to Nigeria, called Nigeria from a bed's eye, like a destination video for, for the federal government and stuff like that. So yeah, it's an interesting project that we're really looking forward to, to doing and stuff. Mm. And we we have a few stunts here and there that we want to put in and stuff. So yeah, the drone guy, yeah, yeah, mm. there's okay. a lot. So how do we keep up with the drone guy, social media and all of that? Oh, um, well, the drone guy is James Amuta, basically, okay. and all my social media handles at James Amuta. On Instagram, I release amazing videos oh, regularly a lot to check on Instagram, out that's at James Amuta. And um, on Twitter, on Facebook, it's still at James Amuta. Or you can just go to jamesamuta.com. All the, all the videos, photos and stuff, Everything you can link on through the website. There. Check us out on YouTube. It's still James Amuta and stuff. So, yeah, the drone guy, exciting things. Exciting stuff, things. Yeah. Wow. It's been great having you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Keep living Thank dangerously. I mean. Oh, yes. <laughs> I, I, I can't. I, there's nowhere else to oh, Wow. No Thank you. It's been great. Live. Very great having you on the show. Thank you very much. It's Thank been you. a wonderful time with the drone guy, James Amuta. Uh, there's this guy that climbed up, a gaffer, a light. Yeah. Big shout out to uh, Shegun Adeleke, by the way. He does a wonderful job. It's even hard to climb this. I mean, yeah. just this small one, like, we are scared to climb. How much more? Now, this one climbed away, 20,000 feet. 20,000 feet. Oh, a lot of people chickened out. A lot of crew, Nigerian crew. They, have, I mean, they like playing it safe. Eh, no, we can't go to Kilimanjaro. What could have been? I mean, 10 minutes, you'd have made record. But yeah. anyway, you did it. Yeah, did you it. did it. With the help of my friend, Labi Fabi. He's an yeah. amazing um, DP. Wow. Amazing cameraman, you know. Okay, so that, that Everest thing, man, I can climb too. Oh, yeah, no problem. You need to train for she three go? years. <laughs> Three years. Yeah. No problem. It's a target. All right. It's been wonderful having him on the show. The drone guy.